In Ephesians 6 verse 12, Paul wrote, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, a lot of times in this world, people are looking at flesh and blood as being an issue. People are also looking at flesh and blood for a solution, when ultimately the battle is spiritual. And sadly, some people are falling for the devil's agenda because the devil, as Paul also wrote, he masquerades as an angel of light. He pretends to care. He pretends as if he's there on your behalf. I've spoken a lot about the movie, The Pilgrim's Progress, the animated version, where in the valley, Christian Pilgrim, dressed in full armor of God, which this chapter of Ephesians 6 addresses, or of Ephesians addresses, he was dressed in full armor of God, having the sword of the Spirit, which is an offensive weapon. And when Apollyon, also known as Abaddon, Abaddon showed up, one of the first things he tried to do was to disarm Christian Pilgrim, so he could take an advantage of him. And yes, Paul also wrote that we should not be ignorant of the devil's devices, lest he get an advantage of us. One of the tools of the enemy is to use tragedy and then to try to provide a solution to the said tragedy. But ultimately, it is a strategy of a devil to take advantage of people who can see what he has planned if they go along with his agenda. And a person who represented the devil quite well is the apostle Judas. In John 12, we can learn a lot about how the enemy operates. Also, in um, Genesis 3, because he was saying things to the woman as if he was on her side, but ultimately he was on his side. And when the woman followed his advice, she went into sin. She led her husband into sin. She led the world into, to fall into sin. So again, just because the devil is coming and as if he cares, do not be fooled. So in John 12, start verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them at, that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear was put therein. Hmm. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying. She kept this. For the poor always ye have with ye, but me ye have not always. When I was inspired to share this, it applied to a certain situation, but I know it's applicable to multiple situations. A lot of times rather than speaking about something in particular, I give generalities so that you can recognize the enemy where so he is, how so he tries to make an appearance so you can shut him down. Rather than speaking about certain things that are specific and then maybe only use a message for a specific situation as opposed to using it repeatedly to disarm the enemy where so he tries to make an appearance. But as I was reading this, the incident recently in Tennessee, where a transgendered person, I'm not sure if the person was born a man or woman, but a transgendered person apparently shot and killed six people, three children, three adults. And a lot of people are looking at, well, if we made gun laws and disarmed people, then that would be the solution. In Genesis 4, there were no guns. In fact, before the advent of guns, people were getting killed, murdered in the Bible, murdered throughout history. And the thing is, it is not a weapons problem, 
it is a sin problem. I served in the military. I'm going to tell you, if you've ever watched a cowboy movie, a western, and you see them enter a bar, and in the bar almost everyone's armed to the teeth. That's the way it is for anyone who's ever deployed and been on a military base in the dining facility. One of the most heavily armed places anywhere one exists on the earth. Some people with multiple weapon systems. Sometimes a soldier may have, or a service member, may have multiple knives on his or her person, may have a sidearm or pistol, a AR style weapon, as some like to say, a squad automatic, automatic weapon, and other weapon system. Yet things like this typically do not happen on those circumstances. So it's not about people having weapons. It's about the mentality of people. When I say mentality, it's not always about mental health. Because there are some things that are being done. It is not a mental issue. In fact, I just recorded a message about how Satan incited Judas to rebel against Jesus. Also in 1 Chronicles 21, Satan incited David to take a census, which was against God's will. People are being influenced by the devil. And while reading this, what stood out to me, in verse 4, or start in verse 4, Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear that was put therein. What struck me as I was reading that? There are people. Now they're expressing such concern for children because they were murdered. But these same individuals will be the ones who want others to chop off body parts to mutilate children. And they're talking about they care about children and the weapons that are used against them. A number 11 scalpel, a number 15 scalpel in the hand of a surgeon is just as dangerous to a child as someone who's carrying a weapon. With all these things, do not forget who the real enemy is. So there are a bunch of people, they're speaking about guns and how it's being used against children, but they're hypocrites.